Will you be a millionaire by 2040? Will the market crash before then? Watch this video to find out. S&P 500 index notches new record high above 4,440. Wall Street's mean index is tripping modestly higher on Wednesday. Core CPI inflation in U.S. edge slightly lower than July. Financial stocks continue to push higher on rising U.S. FIBA yields. Wall Street's main index is open slightly higher on Wednesday following July inflation data from the U.S. The S&P 500 index, which reached a new all-time high of 4,440, is currently up 0. S&P 500 chart. Gold miners, celebration time. Another day, another decline in junior miners, and another increase in profits from short positions. Shouldn't we expect a rebound though? Well, no. The rebound already happened in late July and early August, and what we see now is the trend is losing. Consequently, even if it wasn't for all the long-term analysis for the 2012-2013 declines in gold and gold stocks, one should expect the current short-term decline to be significantly bigger than the counter trend ups at this time, the move lower is just somewhat bigger than the preceding one. Thus, it's not excessive and can easily continue. However, let's keep in mind that periods of very high volatility usually need to be followed by periods of relatively low volatility. That's when investors verify the new reality of the price levels after the decline are justified or not. If the market votes no, we get huge rebounds and breakdowns and validations. So far this week, the markets have been voting yes. Consequently, the current back and forth trading is perfectly normal, and it's in tune with what I wrote in the previous days, even in the case of the details. While the precious metals are taking a breather, the gold mining stocks continue to decline, but in a steady amount, that's what happened earlier this year and during the 2013 slide. While a steady decline might not get as many heads turning as big daily slides, it also serves a very important purpose. You see, the mining stocks are now verifying the breakdown below the neck level of the head and shoulders pattern. Once this breakdown is verified, miners will be likely to fall much lower, as the target resulting from this formation is based on the size of its head. In this case, it implies a move to about $28. In the case of the junior gold miners, the situation is even more bearish, as they just moved below the previous yearly levels, and they are confirming the breakdown. Please note how the junior miners lost their momentum right after declining a relatively big ball. In yesterday's analysis, I commented on junior miners this move was not as concerned, but with the significant volume on which it took place, it was quite believable. Therefore, it wouldn't be surprised to see a few days of consolidation before senior miners move much lower, as I wrote earlier today. Gold and silver were not doing much yesterday, but it's a perfectly normal phenomenon. In fact, if gold moves back to the previously broken lows at about $1,750, it won't invalidate the bearish narrative. The most powerful tool, self-similarity. Gold has a triangle vertex based reversal close to the end of the next week, which means that it could continue to consolidate and move a bit higher in the next several days, and then slide once again. Please note that this would make the current decline very similar in terms of its pace to the decline that we saw in June. While the moves don't have to be identical, the gold price quite often moves in similar patterns. I've seen this many times in the past decade. For example, please note how similar the short-term declines that we saw between August 2020 and December 2020 were. And while gold is consolidating after breaking below its June lows, the GDX is doing so after breaking below the neck level of the head and shoulders pattern and the GDXJ is trading sideways after breaking to new yearly lows. Silver is also consolidating after a breakdown to new yearly lows. Unless silver manages to soar back above the March lows shortly, it will be likely to fall profoundly once again soon. The inverse of the above is likely the USD index, which is verifying its second attempt to break above its inverse head and shoulders pattern. 
The August 2020 highs are the next short-term resistance for the USD index, but I don't expect it to decline significantly from there. Instead, it seems to me that the USDX will rally to almost 98 based on the inverse H&S pattern, and then it might consolidate. So, while the USD index and the precious metals market might consolidate for a few days, they are likely to continue their most recent sizable moves shortly thereafter. Consequently, while I can't make any promises with regard to the performance of any asset, it seems that the profits on the short positions in junior miners are going to increase substantially in the coming weeks. Sunshine Profits – Effective Investment Through Diligence and Care Gold Price Forecast – Rebound and Bullion Generates RSI by Signal Gold Price Talking Points the price of gold attempts to retrace the sharp decline from the start of the week even though longer-dated U.S. Treasury yields come under pressure, and the precious metal may stage a larger recovery over the coming days as the Relative Strength Index offers a textbook buy signal. Gold Price Forecast Rebound and Bullion Generates RSI by Signal The price of gold appears to be in phase by the stickiness in the U.S. Consumer Price Index as the headline reading holds steady at 5.4% for the second month and it seems as though bullion will move to the beat of its own drum ahead of the Kansas City Fed Economic Symposium scheduled for August 26, 28 as it reverses course ahead of the March low. Nevertheless, the slowdown in the core CPI may reinforce the Fed's expectations for a transitory rise in inflation as the reading narrows to 4.3% from 4.5% in June, and signs of easing price growth may dampen the appeal of gold as a growing number of Federal Reserve officials show a greater willingness to switch gears. In turn, speculation for a looming Fed exit strategy may keep the price of gold within the confines of a downward trend a death cross formation takes shape in August, with the negative slope in both the 50-day and 200-day SMIs offering a bearish outlook as the double bottom formation from early in Indianapolis. With that said, the rebound from the monthly low may turn out to be a correction in the broader trend rather than a change in market behavior. But the recent developments in the relative strength index indicate a larger advance in the price of gold as the oscillator bounces back from oversold territory to offer a textbook on the Gold price daily chart. Keep in mind, a double bottom emerged in March as the price of gold failed to test the June 2020 level, with the key reversal pattern pushing the precious metal back above the 200 base line for the first time since February. At the same time, the relative strength index pushed into overbought territory for the first time since July 2020 as the price of gold is but the double bottom formation seems to have a new force as the RSI no longer tracks the upward trend from earlier. The negative slopes in both the 50 day and 200 day SMIs indicate that the broader trend for both remains still to the downside, with a depth cross formation taking shape in August as the RSI pushed into oversold territory. However, lack of momentum to test the March low has generated a textbook buy signal in the RSI as the oscillator climbs back above 30 with a move above the Fibonacci overlap around $1,743 to $1,763 bringing the $1,786 region back on the radar. Next area of interest comes in around $1,816 to $1,822, which lines up with the 200-day smart, followed by the $1,837 to $1,847 region. Need a break of the March low to open up the $1,670 with the next area of interest coming in around $1,648 to $1,655.